geometry, fourth pace. This is pace 1112. And um, hopefully you've done pretty well throughout this and you're getting the idea of how to do the proofs. Um, I will give you a tip, and this is um, on the advice of someone who's guided a lot of this isn't just me, but a teacher, Mr. Root, who has guided a lot of students through geometry, and he said the hardest thing about this pace is that there is algebra involved, there's math that you need to know how to do. You do need to be very familiar with the uh, student handbook with all the theorems and definitions and know those well. Okay, study them before you try to do the self-test and remember them then for the PACE test. Very important. Okay, when we get to page 33 and 34, these are two pretty tough pages. Okay, so we're going to go through how to do the uh, construction there on page 34. I'm going to give you a tip for that. And then uh, we'll do another video for page 35 and 36. And that'll take us to the end of this PACE um, for the most part. Okay, these are some of the toughest things, the toughest pages in this whole pace. All right, let's look here at uh, page 33, and uh, this is a construction of how to take a given line segment and divide it into a certain number of equal parts, okay? So you start with just drawing the line segment or it's given to you, and you're asked to find the equal segments, okay? I'm going to walk through it using... Um, the whiteboard here, and um, we'll go through the procedure. And then, I, I, let me. While I'm thinking about it, I want to give you this other tip here as well for page 34. They have you doing these um, constructions, four of them. And if if you don't feel like you have enough room, and it feels kind of tight, which I think it would on these little spaces, if you can get just blank paper, you know, from the computer or something. And, um, you know, start with a bigger one. Give yourself a little more room, okay? You don't, have, you don't have to measure. It doesn't have to be that small. You know, make it a longer line and give yourself more room. If you want to do each one on a separate page, I think you'll find it easier than trying to use your protractor, excuse me, compass. I always get those two confused. Using your compass um, in real small increments, okay? So if you can keep the points a little further apart, I think it'll work better. It's up to you and your, your parent or teacher uh, whether they will allow you to do that, but I would encourage students to do that and uh, use this method. Okay, here we go. Step one. <clears throat> so this is the given line, and uh, so I'm going to use my handy-dandy uh, ruler here and just make a line that runs longer and is heading down, so an acute angle up here, okay, an acute. Now, <clears throat> we're going to take, this represents my compass, remember? <clears throat> so I'm going to make this a fixed distance and go from this end, and this one I'm going to do four, so I'm choosing four. So here's where I determine the four. I go one, and then starting right here with my compass, I make another mark here, and then another one, and then there's the fourth one, okay? So one, two, three, four. And now my goal is to somehow use these lengths to break this up into four equal parts, all right? It's cheating to take a ruler and measure it and divide by four and then go back and mark it. You're defeating the whole purpose, okay? We're not doing that. So the next step now <clears throat> is take the end point and this mark here that I have for number four, and we're going to connect, connect those points, all right? <clears throat> and now the key is we're going to start here and work our way up. And each, so sweep an arc that intersects both of these, okay? Do the same here, sweep an arc that intersects both, keeping it the same distance, okay? And like that. 
Then we're going to come back and measure each of these. We're copying this angle. So I'm trying to get this exact distance. So from here to here, yay! So I go from here to here, here to here, here to here. Okay, are you with me? <laughs> Once we created this first angle, then this is the one that we're using to copy. If we get this angle, we copy it to here, to here, to here. Now, We'll go back and take mark three right here and this intersection. Okay, mark two and that intersection and then mark one and the intersection that I made up here above it, all of these lines are parallel because this angle is now equal to this angle and this angle and this angle. And if all those angles are congruent, then these lines are parallel. And if these lines are parallel, then these transversals are being intersected at exactly the same length. So this length is the same as this, the same as this, the same as this. And now I know that this length is the same as this, the same as this, the same as this, okay? And using whiteboard and markers and this, yeah, it's not gonna be exact, exact if I were to try to measure them, but it would be really close, okay? And if you're really accurate and you use a sharp point on your compass, Hopefully uh, you can get these to line up. And like I said, it is easier if you just do it on a bigger sheet of paper and not try to work in a real small area in the corner of your pace, okay? Um, I'll stop it right there and let's talk about the next page in just a minute.